Hi everyone, so welcome back to our YouTube channel where we talk about something interesting in the legal sector or something you should probably know within the legal sector. My name is Yolanda Mnyengeza and I'm an attorney and a director of Mnyengeza Attorneys. Listen, we do note we haven't put out content for quite a while and we apologize for that. However, we do hope that you guys have been enjoying the holidays so far. So what are we talking about today? Now today I want us to talk about a development that took place within the education law sector and how this has impacted the law and what it actually means for learners wanting to apply to public ordinary schools in South Africa currently. Now before 2019, a learner who wanted to apply to a school needed to provide certain documents to the school along with the application. What are these documents? This learner needed to provide a birth certificate, um, their road to health clinic card if they were starting school, and their report card. Now, in that, uh, uh, prior to that 2019, if a learner, for instance, could not provide a birth certificate to a school, the principal was allowed to admit the child into the school without this document. However, the parent needed to provide the document within three months, failing which a school would be able to remove the child from the school, which meant that this was just a conditional acceptance in the, in the school. This is currently the case as well. If you're applying to a public school, you are still required to produce those documents. But now there's been a shift. What is this shift? But before we talk about the shift, I want us to talk about a specific case that erupted in the Eastern Cape um, in the early twin, in, in, in 2017. And, and the judgment of this particular case came out in 2019, which then changed the whole law in South Africa. Let's talk about this particular case. Now, in 2016, the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape actually issued a circular in March. Now, according to the circular, which was directed to schools and to SDB members, the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape was going to update the database system and they needed correct identity documents of learners. So this was going to have an impact on those learners that did not actually produce birth certificates into the school. Now, the second thing that was noted also was that in the circular, the, the learners that did not produce or provide birth certificates or provide correct identity documents would not be counted for post-provisioning, would not be considered for nutrition uh, purposes, which meant that they would not be counted as, as, as children that needed to be provided specific uh, uh, funding or, or allocations in terms of, of the law. Now, a second circular in the same year, 2016, was issued by the Department of Education uh, of the Eastern Cape. And this circular was issued in June. What did the circular say? Now, this particular circular said that all of those learners who did not provide these birth certificates or did not provide correct identity document or passport ID numbers would now not be funded completely so it would mean these children, even though they are in these public schools, they were not going to be recognized as such because no funding was going to be allocated to them. Big problem. Now, because of this, in a high school referred to as the Paramisa High School in the Eastern Cape, 30 high school in the Eastern Cape, 37 learners were actually excluded from school because now they were going to be a burden into the school. No funding on their head and they were not even considered for any provisioning or any other provisioning in terms of the law. What happened next? Now the next thing that happened was that these learners were out of school. Now I want us to talk about the category of these learners. You know, uh, many would assume that these learners were probably not South Africans, hence they could not provide these birth certificates. And on top of not being South Africans, they were not in South Africa probably legally. As a result, they did not have any passport numbers or ID numbers that they could produce. But I want us to touch on the type of learners um, that were excluded, that were in this 37 uh, learners. 
Number one, these learners were one, non-South African learners who were, un, who were unable to legalize their stay at that time in South Africa. And as a result, they did not have any form of documentation. The second type of learners that were excluded in that number were learners that were born from South Africans who did not themselves have identity documents. Remember, a parent when they're going to the uh, a home affairs needs to provide their own documentation prior to applying for their children's birth certificates. And so majority also of those children were from South African parents who did not have any documentation. The third category of these children were actually children who were probably abandoned by their mothers or who had a mother that was deceased and were being raised by a father. Now remember, that time, if a father was raising a child, they were unable to go and, and, and request a birth certificate on behalf of their child because in terms of the home affairs um, laws, they could only do so through the mother. And so this was also some of the children who were excluded in this particular group. The other group was actually children who had parents who were deceased or who had abandoned them and were being raised by other people. And because they were being raised by other people, they were unable to get the correct documentation because their parents were absent. And as a result, those children did not have birth certificates. So if you look at this, it was not only children from outside of South Africa that were uh, affected or that were coming from parents who were born outside of South Africa, but it was also children whose parents were South Africans but had some difficulty in obtaining certain documentation. So this had a great impact, which actually led to a case being instituted in 2017. Now, in this particular case, there were quite a number of, of, of laws or specific policies as well as legislation that was being challenged by the applicants in this particular case. And, and they challenged these particular laws and, and, and policies that I'll speak to just now on the basis that they were unconstitutional because they now prohibited or they, had a, they were tramping on the right to education of children because now children were being excluded because of these policies and these laws and these circulars. So before we talk about anything else, let's talk about these specific laws that, and, and what they actually stated that resulted in these learners suffering or their right to education being trumped. Let's talk about the first one. The first biggest issue was the circulars that we spoke to in the Eastern Cape. Those two circulars were obviously excluding learners because now they were requesting that learners provide birth certificates for them to have access to education. So this was the first piece of uh, uh, law that the applicants actually wanted to be declared unconstitutional on the basis that they were just uh, violating the right to education of these children and would continue to do so. The second piece of legislation that was an issue was the Immigration Act. Now, in terms of the Immigration Act, specifically Section 39 and Section 42, institutions, learning institutions, are not allowed in South Africa to actually accept anybody who does not have legalized documentation. So schools in this particular instance interpreted this particular provision to say that any person who is not South African and does not have legal documents is not allowed to actually be in a school or be admitted into a school. If so, then they would be violating the Immigration Act. The second or the third piece of legislation that was an issue was a policy, which I referred to in the beginning, the admission policy or the school's admission policy. Specifically, clause 15 and clause 21 of this policy was a problem. What did these two sections or those two clauses date? Now, these two particular clauses stated, number one, clause 15, a child who was South African needed to provide a birth certificate when they were applying. If they did not provide this birth certificate, they needed to do so within three months of being admitted into the school. 
If not, they would run the risk of actually not being formally uh, and, and finally accepted or admitted into a school. Clause 21, on the other hand, stated where someone who is not South African was applying to a public school to get admission, they needed to provide, if they could not provide any uh, documentation or any passport uh, to the school, they needed to be accepted. However, they needed to provide the school with proof that they had applied to legalize their stay in South Africa. So if they did not have something that states this, they were in trouble. They could not be formally admitted into a public school. So in this particular case, the applicants wanted to actually have all of these sections of, and, and, and these policy, of these policies and these legislations to be declared unconstitutional because what they were doing now is that they were limiting uh, the right to education of children because now children were not being accepted, were being removed from school because of these particular uh, sections and clauses and, 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 and these so what was the court's decision in this particular application? And, and how did it actually impact the law in South Africa? Let's get to it. Now, in terms of, if you remember, the applicants, when they raised this case, wanted, they wanted certain legislation or pieces of legislation, uh, certain aspects of the clauses to be declared invalid on the basis that they violated the right to education of children. Thankfully, in this particular instance, the court agreed with some of those aspects. What exactly did the court say? Number one, the court declared the circulars that were issued by the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape, specifically the 2016 circular that was issued in March, the 2016 circular that was issued in June, they were both declared uh, unconstitutional and therefore invalid on the basis that they actually violated or they were trumping on the right to education of children in South Africa. The second uh, piece of legislation that was also spoken to was the admission policy, specifically the school's admission policy. Now, the clauses 15 and 21 were also declared unconstitutional and invalid on the basis that they actually violated the right to education and they trumped on it. And therefore the court declared that they were invalid. This or the third aspect of this particular case, which was the Immigration Act, the court in this particular instance did not declare these particular sections, which was section 39 and 42 of the Immigration Act as unconstitutional. Rather, the court stated that these particular sections of the Immigration Act were not referring to uh, learning institutions that were of basic or that they were providing basic education, which means that they were not applying to schools, but rather the section 39 and section 42 applied, sorry, to learning or higher learning institutions, such as colleges and universities and other learning institutions, but not um, in South African public or schools. So, as a result, that those sections were not declared invalid. But this was a success either way, because now this meant that every child that was in a South African school and every child wanting to apply to a South African school was not going to be removed from a school or disregarded from applying to a school on the basis that they did not or could not provide a birth certificate. That was made clear. Now, as a result of this judgment, in 2020, the first circular that was issued by the Department of Basic Education of South Africa was a circular speaking to this particular issue. What did the circular say? Or what does it state? Now, this circular states that a child that wants to apply uh, to a school, a public ordinary school in South Africa, is not going to be turned away because they do not have a birth certificate. The second thing that was also stated in the circular is that a child that's in a South African school currently is not going to be removed from a school on the basis that they do not have a birth certificate or do not have a document that actually alludes to their 
identity. So they are going to be remaining in the school and have access to education. The third thing that was noted is that if a child in, is, is, is wanting to apply to a, a public ordinary school, a public school in South Africa, it is enough that they actually provide alternative identity document or, I, or an identifying document should they not have um, a specific uh, birth certificate as required. So what kind of document can this be? In terms of the circular, this document can be an, uh, an affidavit that's actually commissioned. Now, this affidavit will just provide all of the details that are known about the learner as, as, as much as it can identify this learner and, and probably provide some of the reasons why the learner is unable to produce a birth certificate. And that document that is declared by the circular is going to be enough uh, as, as an alternative document for a school to consider. So great, great development, because now this further confirms, as has been in the past, that education in South Africa or the right to education cannot be trumped on. It cannot um, be interrupted by any form of requirement. This particular right is one which is immediately realizable, and this has been confirmed. So if you've got a child that needs to go to a school or you know a neighbor that has a child that needs to go to a school who doesn't have a birth certificate, advise them. They just need to have an identifying document and that can be an affidavit. And this will also accommodate children who are non-South Africans who want to access basic education in South Africa. Okay. That was a long one, but I hope this information was useful. And let's talk next time and talk about something interesting also within the legal sector. As I've stated before, my name is Yolanda Mnyengeza, and I look forward to seeing you next time.